Hey friends, El Lance here with a new episode of El Lance Do It Yourself. So today I'm going to take you into some of the steps that I've taken to build this amazing comfort ceiling. And one of the things that I want to emphasize is that this will be a cheap, lightweight comfort ceiling. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so now and subscribe, hit the notification button so you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Thank you for watching and let's get to work. This is the ceiling that I went ahead and I marked all the shapes that I'm going to be building on the ceiling. So that's exactly how the uh, coffered ceiling will look like once it is complete. It's a dining room and that's how it will be different from the uh, almost square that we have in the uh, living room. Hey friends, as you can see here, I'm trying to uh, cut this piece of plywood uh, in a size that will be more manage manageable because I need to cut those pieces into uh, you know one inch uh, plywood so since it's very big I'm going to you know cut it in a smaller size so that I can easily now cut it to one inch so now that I have this about uh, five inch or six inch I have my uh, spacer that I just set in there to have one inch and I'm cutting this one inch uh, wide. So that's one inch that I'm cutting and I'm going to cut as many uh, you know, of these to, uh, to attach it on the ceiling. So that's it and, and this was not enough. So now I'm here on the ceiling I'm going to try to attach all this on the ceiling as you can see on the, the one that I've already done. So I have a piece of, uh, I think, three eight of an inch uh, plywood. So that's a white piece. So I'm going to move in, you know, that three eight of an inch or two eight of an inch because I need to follow the lines that you see that I have marked on the ceiling and the line is for the coffered ceiling that I'm going to make so to make sure that everything all the measurements are you know exact I need to move that in about three or two eight of an inch if I don't do that when I put my coffered ceiling it will be it will not be straight because if I don't take that into consideration right now, it will not be straight. So uh, you can also see there that I went ahead and I found, I tried to find all the stud in the ceiling and I marked those places. So all the stud that you see there that I marked are the places where I'm going to use screwdriver to screw all, uh, I'm going to use screw to screw all those piece one inch plywood on the ceiling to make sure that it's seated well because right now I'm trying to attach it with a nail gun and for the final project you don't need it to be you know to you don't want all that weight to be on a on a on a nail gun so you want screw so that you have a better uh, a better tight on the ceiling all right so that's what I'm going to be doing all uh, all over the ceiling on all the area that I have already marked and marking the ceiling was a very important step in on this project that's really what made this project very successful because once you have everything marked you, you don't have any more room for mistake you just follow what you have already marked on the ceiling and that that was it was not easy to do all that work but once I had done it it made my job so easy to just follow the lines, to just follow all those instead of trying to figure out if it's level or all those things. That was the pre, you know, the first work. I made sure that everything, all the line was level and straight all over the ceiling. Then I put all these pieces of one inch plywood on the ceiling and screw it to make it very strong on the ceiling. And as you can see, one inch plywood, it's very lightweight. 
so it's not going to add a lot of weight on the ceiling as you can see on this coffered ceiling that i've already set in place it's just the two one inch uh, plywood that is already attached on the ceiling plus two additional plywood that i use to make that coffered ceiling yeah that's uh, that was really a good way to go about this project very happy about it and uh you know this ceiling is all um drywall and i was concerned about the weight that i'll be adding on the ceiling that's why i chose to go this way So now that I have all these pieces, this plywood, uh, these rails attached on the ceiling, I'm, I'm now going to use screw to permanently attach it on the ceiling. And that will give it better strength. And it will also be able to hold all the covered ceiling that will be covering all these rails that are put in place on the ceiling. So I'm going to go ahead and screw all those pieces all around. Then put the uh, covered ceiling and move to the next step. Also, one thing to mention here is that the right angle where those rails join together to form a 90 degree, I have, I have created a gap there about three quarter of an inch to make sure that uh, the uh, covered ceiling can sit you know going on one direction uh you know so that i can have room because if i lock everything in there i will not have room to make things uh you know uh, I, I, it will make me have a lot of pieces and i don't want that i want to be able to create a long covered ceiling and just have it sitting straight and you will see when that will come to play Hey friends, as you can see here, we have come to one of the most important steps of this project. So now is to make the covered ceiling. So the first step will be for me to put the uh, glue on this piece of plywood and then turn it over and put it on that uh, six and a half inch wide, one ten of an inch plywood. And I'm going to create a gap of one ten of an inch before I clamp it as you can see me doing there so this again this uh, uh, that piece of plywood that i i use to create a gap one ten of an inch and that gap that i'm creating is for the uh, plywood that will be sitting on the edge on along that border because i don't want uh, i don't want the finish line the bottom line to be seen when you look from the bottom up of the ceiling I don't want any line to be seen that's why i'm creating that gap so that it can sit on top of the one that is uh, on the bottom so when I ha once i have that glue in i'm just going to clamp it all the way there and use the uh, the nail gun to to nail to nail it on the uh, on the piece of plywood so the reason i'm nailing it down is just because uh, i don't have enough time to wait for it to to dry to seal because the glue can do a good job holding it but it will take a lot of time to build one piece and wait for it to to dry and so having a nail a staple gun will be uh, you know it's it's very helpful to do that to just step it in and move to the next one so i will just repeat the same thing here and put the glue turn it over uh, make sure that i have my one eighth of an inch gap there for the uh, siding to be uh, for the you know to, for the room for the siding and then nail it in and that pretty much it
So now I'm going to just nail it. Uh, you know, this is staple gun, so I'm going to lock it in place. Staple gun is very efficient here because it will really hold it in place. If you use a nail gun, a straight nail, a straight bright uh, bright nail, it will not hold it. Uh, you know, you know, you know, it will not have a, a good strength. It will fall. It will fall out. So you need to use a staple gun to do this type, this part. So now that I have that, I will, you know. You know, since I have a stapler holding it, I will just remove all the clamps and, you know, put the glue again on the side. As you can see here, put the glue and then get another piece of uh, one eighth of, you know, thickness for the uh, plywood. And this part, this piece of plywood, it's uh, about four, four and a half inch and yeah it's about four and a half inch so that is sitting right on the space that i use the uh, small piece of uh, one ten of an inch to create that gap so it sit right in there and i'm just going to make sure that everything is straight and then i will nail it again uh, yeah, I'll step at it again. There you go. You now put some few stepper on it so that you can hold it well in place. And the good thing about this is that the, the uh, stepper goes right almost in. I mean, you can you can see it, and it creates a little bit of. Uh, uh, it does make the uh, the plywood come out a little bit, so I'm going to just sand it to make it uh, flat. But that will be when I'm done. I will just once everything is set on the ceiling, I will sand all the parts that need to be sanded. Again, same thing here. Just put the glue and hold it with a clamp. Make sh making sure that everything is good and everything is lining up well and then use the uh, stepper gun to lock it in place et voilà it is done c'est fini c'est joli c'est beautiful c'est magnifique and i'll just put it on the side to dry for some time and at the meantime i will just be working on other pieces and then grab it and attach it on the ceiling there you go And now it will just be to repeat this process over and over. And this was very painful. It's not easy, but it's very, very worth it and beautiful once everything is done. And it does bring a lot of value on, on the house. And uh, it's very expensive to pay to do this. And, there are other ways of doing this that will cost you way, way much more than going this way. Because if you want to buy all the finished material from the store, it will be so expensive. So now that we have some of these pieces, you can see another thing that you, uh, I want to mention here is that if you plan to do this, you need to, uh, there are some steps that you don't want to to take before making this as you can see here first i have the glue in 
uh, along the edge so it's going to hold it in place and I'm still going to use the uh, stepper to to lock it you know to lock it in yeah but as I was saying uh, there are some steps that you don't want to take before doing the coffered ceiling as you can see here you see uh, the crown molding that I already have on the ceiling so it made it very difficult for me to to shape this coffered ceiling you know the end of it to shape it to the uh, the, the shape of the crown molding it was very painful so if I had to if I have to redo it to do it again I will make sure that I do the coffered ceiling first before I do the crown molding all around the house so here you can see how the uh, one eighth of an inch gap that I left here uh, is playing out so it allows me give me room to be able to just put my coffered ceiling in without having to you know to cut anything else so you just sit right in same thing on this side just have enough room there to just set it in place uh, going in this direction all right
Hey friends, another very painful step here to paint all the ceiling. And also, as you can see here, I went ahead and I put some small crown molding all around the, uh, uh, the coffered ceiling and the, uh, and the ceiling. As you can see around the corner, you can see some crown molding there. So I did that. Et voilà, c'est doux, c'est magnifique, j'adore. C'est ça, elle lance the Hawaii. Thank you so much for watching and please do like, share and subscribe. Merci, gracias, uh, danke schön, my laptop and uh, see you soon for a new episode of Elle Lance Do It Yourself. A bientôt et à la prochaine épisode de Elle Lance Fais-le Toi-même. Au revoir.